So you're a busy person, right? Saving clicks could make a really big difference and give you much more time to focus on more important things. One of the ways that you can save clicks is by using editor utility blueprints. Now you've probably seen elements like these enormous sprawling UI widgets and things where you've got to stitch it all together just to get like a, a toggle flipped. And so what I thought I'd do is show you how to set up an asset action utility so that you can right click on one of your assets. This in this instance, an attenuation, but this is comparable with every asset in Unreal, including your own ones. Um, and set up a scripted asset action like this toggle audio spatialization, which would go into the blueprint and just flip a toggle. If it's off, turn it on. If it's on, turn it off. Thanks for explaining, I guess. The benefit of that is it's super fast and it also works with uh, multiple at once. So I can open up a bunch and hit toggle. You can set up any stream of behavior here you'd like. You could set up something that checks for naming conventions, checks or resets to defaults. Um, I can kind of come up with like thousands of ideas here uh, for what to do. The way that you do them, and I'll show you the whole thing is actually just this uh, blueprint here. It's super duper short. That's it finished, right? To make one of these, set up an editor utility blueprint. Now there are a few different varieties of these here. So you have editor utility actor, object, asset action utility, and function library. I definitely recommend thinking very, very modularly here uh, so that you don't end up with something with lots of dependencies because anything that you're making should probably be able to port between quite a few different uh, uh, elements here. Now you can set up factories to make a lot of objects as well. So uh, maybe in a future tutorial, if you're interested, I could set up one that uh, you know takes a bunch of sounds and makes a meta sound out of it, something like that. Today, we're just gonna set up an asset action utility. Inside this EUB, we'll need to set up the supported classes. Now supported classes sets you up so that you could right click on a specific class type and see these options. So for example, in textures, you wouldn't wanna see the audio options. So we wouldn't include that as a supported class. If I click the supported classes, I'll be able to hook up literally anything in the game, including all your own blueprints as well. So if you had a specific color, um, so if you had a specific config there, that'll kind of work. For me, I'm gonna look up attenuation. You'll see a few different options. Be careful which one you pick because it will change the options, but you'll be able to see them pretty quickly. If I do click on any asset at the moment, I won't see EUB, okay? Because I haven't created a function. Now a function is what actually runs. Here, if I go like uh, reset naughty defaults, let's say. When I compile and go back to my uh, attenuation, if I right click on these, I'll have the reset naughty defaults. Okay, it won't do anything right now, but it's going to configure that. If I right click on a different asset, I don't have that option because I've set it up as a supported class. And this is really important just to make sure that you don't end up generating a lot of menu chunk. You know, people like to add their own buttons and toggles and tabs and modes and stuff. Um, within larger projects and you can end up with these really long chains that are actually quite hard to use. So try and think about uh, separating that out. For example, if we look at the scripted assets, you can see I've already made an audio subfolder. Now that's something small, but if I make 30 of these editor asset actions, it's gonna bulk that up. So let's move that naughty defaults into where it should be because right now it's, it's a naughty default. Now to do that, we'll just need to set the category to audio. Go back to our assets and we have it within our audio subfolder now. You can kind of go out and build those out. Let's check out this audio toggle. Uh, it's quite simple in the blueprint side of it, but you want to keep things nice and clean because they can run over a long time. So I have a context just to say the undo session. Now this begin transaction node will start an, an event, an undo step so that if you don't do this, you have to like hit undo for every single change that you make. And it could be enormous if you had a bunch of different assets. Whereas what I do here, where I might loop over all of them and only have one undo to undo all the steps. Have a little description, handy to have. Get selected assets is going to grab the assets that you have selected in the editor. And we're gonna loop through each of those and cast the whatever comes out because it's just an object reference at that point cast that to a sound attenuation. Now we know that it's a sound attenuation, but if it fails, it just won't do anything. For there, we're gonna transact object that's gonna sort of start this specific object having the undo step that it's going to be in the undo buffer for that stage. From there, we need to set an attenuation. Now, Unreal has not, unfortunately, and maybe this is a quick pull request that I should write up later today. When you have the sound attenuation, you can't, for example, like set spatialization, it's private can't do like 
spatial. So I can set active spatial plugin. There's not a lot of options. As I said, maybe a quick pull request. Uh, we want to grab the attenuation because the attenuation is the, the whole asset or the whole struct that's being loaded. When we break that attenuation, we get all of the different options. Now, if I look inside my, my attenuation set here, that's just all of this stuff. It's the entire struct, the entire class, which means we can actually change any of these. So if we wanted to, we could make like a data asset, which is like default attenuation settings, which might turn on, turn off like, well, let's say we wanted to use air absorption and we had like specific air absorption ranges, but then we didn't want to use reverb. And then we did want to use priority, something like that make a data asset or make a struct that has these, actually, yeah, make a data asset that has a specific set, pass that in as an option, which you can do pretty easily as well. Unfortunately for me though, I needed to remake, I just want to make a toggle. So I took the specialization, I hit not, which is just going to flip it to the other side. Unfortunately, it does mean that you need to make it again because you can't just change the specialization, which means I had to go and hook all these up. And that was fun. And that's what I mean by having time, you know? That's why you gotta have time. That's why these things save time, allegedly, even though it's only changing one text box. It's still like double clicking on it, scrolling down, clicking it off, going back out. But this is just an example. From there, we make it, we reset the old stuff, minus this not. You could make a whole bunch of these for any combination of these as well. Reset the new attenuation, and I just like to do a log string for the debug where we do a format text for the spatialization to just say, hey, this asset turns to true or false, whatever it might be. This will allow you to make editor action utility blueprints. Uh, they're very, very useful. They're very easy to make, and you can build up a really diverse box of stuff without having to get into editor uh, widgets and, and all the layout stuff that needs to be done there. Um, the only other thing I might show you really quickly is if we wanted to pass in, yeah, so let's say I wanted to grab this attenuation, I can actually pass it into the function itself. So this could kind of work here. When I right click and I do scripted assets and I toggle, so there you go. So if I pass in an attenuation, I can also set it up so that I can choose all my options here. This is going to override all those changes I made. So I, I wouldn't do that for this specific tool, but it would mean that I could edit these, you know, writ large or pass in a few of them or separate them out, like allow people to pass in a struct that has the parameters that they want. And they maybe you have four different presets with different uh, attenuation shapes or something like that. That will allow you to kind of really modularize this and create really useful editor action utilities.